Hmm. Hi, everybody. This is one of those days where I'm running late, but I wanted to start the video because I didn't want you to wonder if we had tech issues. Um, so this is a this is a user error over here, and um, bear with me. Oh, hey, Rachel. Y'all say hi to my friend, Rachel. She's the minister of our church in Amherst, Massachusetts but it looks like she got a Sunday off. All right, so all the links you need for worship are um, now in the description of this video. And um, what you'll need for our special congregational meeting will be coming. Okay. All right, I'm catching up here. We have Rachel, we have Lynn, we have Susan, we have Don, hey Lisa, hi Brandy and Brenna, hi Janet and Charlotte, hi Jessica, hi Cindy, hi Robert, hi Marie, hi Vance, hi Sue, hi Ella. Ooh, Harold, if you're not getting audio, I think it, that's a, is that a Harold problem or a me problem? Hey, Marty. Hey, Carl. Hmm. Audio's fine. Hey, Leslie. Hey, Kaja. Hey, Caroline. Hi, Myra Ann. Hey, Rick. Hey, Roger. Hey, Betsy. Okay. So the audio's fine. Hey, Harold. Hey, Stevie, Nora. Hey, Mary. Oh, great. Okay, Mary, your sisters are with you. Really glad to hear that. Okay.
There we go. All right. Hey, Emily. All right. Oh. Friends, it's Sunday. <laughs> Everybody has those days. Uh, good morning. Hey, Ken and Mary Alice. Hi, Donna. All right. We're going to start church now. Good morning. I'm the Reverend Sadie Lansdale, and I I am minister of the Unitarian Universalist Church of Greensboro, North Carolina. Unitarian Universalists are open-minded about the sources of truth and meaning. We are spiritual seekers. We believe firmly that all human beings are precious and that all life is interconnected. We strive to build the beloved community here on earth in our fellowship with one another and in our work for justice. Whoever you are, whomever you love, However you have found your way to our corner of the internet, welcome. Our ministry team here at UUCG is me, Cindy Dillard, our Director of Children's and Youth Ministry, and Mark Freund, our Director of Music. Behind the scenes, our Congressional Administrator is Julie Hamilton. Mark is on vacation right now, and you'll hear from him when he's back. In addition to silencing your cell phones, you can take this time to minimize distractions in your online environment. So if you're joining us from your phone, you'll just stay on this Facebook Live. If you're joining us from your computer, you might close your tabs and keep open only this window in the order of service. Um, and a link to the Google Doc of our order of service is in the description of this video. And all you have to do is click that link if you'd like to follow along. We have a members only special congregational meeting today at noon. We're gonna be voting on postponing our board and governance elections and our annual meeting until September. We will need a quorum, so please hop over to that Zoom link when worship is done. And thank you to those of you who've sent your questions to Betsy, our church president, so that leadership had time to respond thoughtfully and, um, and consider all of your questions and concerns. Um, we will also be moving worship to Zoom sometime in the next few weeks. There will be more information about how to make that transition in your newsletter um, and on our Facebook page. If you're interested in helping us do that, please get in touch with me. Um, and the reason to do that is so that Mark and Cindy and I can lead worship together and so that we can have guests uh, and also so that we can figure out how you can see each other's faces during worship. Um, so. All of this is an experiment, and we look forward to hearing um, how it goes for you. You may want to find a candle or a chalice in your home to light along with me. And if you don't have one easily accessible, you might remember for next week. We like this chalice, symbol of our Unitarian Universalist faith, to remind us to connect in spirituality and in service, to care for each other and the world, and to create loving community. I invite you to rise in body or in spirit and sing our opening hymn along with me, number 1064, Blue Boat Home. Though below me I feel no motion, 
standing on these mountains and plains, far away from the rolling ocean, still my dry land heart can say, I've been sailing all my life now, never a harbor or port have I known. The wide universe is the ocean I travel, and the earth is my blue home. Sun, my sail, and moon, my rudder, as I ply the starry sea, leaning over the edge in wonder, casting questions into the deep, drifting here with my ship's companions, only kindred pilgrim souls making our way by the lights of the heavens in our beautiful blue boat home. I give thanks to the waves upholding me, hail the great winds urging me on, greet the infinite sea before me, sing the sky my sailor song. I was born upon the fathoms, never harbor or port have I known. The wide universe is the ocean I travel, and the earth is my blue boat home. Will you join me in our unison affirmation? Love is the doctrine of this church. The quest of truth is its sacrament, and service is its prayer to dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge in freedom, to serve human need, to the end that all souls shall grow into harmony with the divine. Thus do we covenant with each other and with God. In that spirit of unison, will you greet your neighbors in your house or in the comments? And uh, if you like, you can take this time to let me know if you can hear me. Um, or if I should talk louder. Hi, everybody. Hi, Dorothy. Hi, Marianne. Hey, Kay. Hey, Joe. Hi, Brian. Hey, Suzanne. Okay, sounds like you Hey, Eddie. Hey, Donna. Hey, Merritt.
hero. Hmm. Visitors. Oh, Marilyn. Oh, no. Hamley. Marilyn, we'll catch you. Enjoy. When we sing our meditation hymn, we allow the spirit to move through us with our breath. We sing things we cannot say. We sing our prayers and our heartbreak, our hopes and our yearnings. We come together in some in sacred space this morning. Will you stay seated and open your hearts for a meditation hymn number 123, Spirit of Life. Spirit of life, come unto me. Sing in my heart all the stirrings of compassion. Blow in the wind, rise in the sea, move in a hand, giving life the shape of justice. Roots hold me close, wings set me free, spirit of life, come to me, come to me. Spirit of life, we gather in gratitude for this life and this morning. We celebrate the joys among us which are magnified when they are shared. Janet Plummer's son Clark is out of intensive care and is in another heart unit of the hospital. Linda Gretton's Aunt Marion has been released from the hospital and her cousin Marion, um, Marion and Frank's daughter is gradually being weaned off the ventilator. So this is some good news, especially after the death of her uncle Frank. Brad Whitley has a few joys being able to practice his chosen faith for questions and dogs and his family. If there is a word of joy on your heart, you may speak it now. Lift it up in the silence or type it in the comments for me to read it aloud. Camille is recovered from the Becca, we rejoice with you and Camille and your whole family. Resilience and patience. The help being alive. Beautiful West North Carolina. Freedom. Birds. Everything that's blooming. All the ways that we care. Amelia's friend is home from the hospital and recovered. Yeah. Everything's coming up. 
time. Yeah, the azaleas, viruses, love. Oscar's joy is exercise. family. Internet and the ways we help each other learn it. My Ann's friend has recovered and can donate blood with antibodies. Family. No, Gladys McNatt turned a hundred and two this week. Leo's joy is climbing trees. <laughs> we also lift up those who are sorrowful within our community and outside. Brad Whitley is missing his class and feels for older people suffering from the virus and is sorrowful that his sons don't understand what's going on. If there is a word of sorrow on your heart, speak it now, lift it up in silence, or type it in the comments for me to read out loud. Online school is overwhelming. Marilyn fainted and fell, which is really scary. social distance Roe won't be able to claim unemployment because it's reopening but not feeling safe. Division and being far away from for all the kids who are scared and confused. Ignorant Yeah. Missing general assignments and people over, we would love to, to see separated. All the people we know who are sick or have had loved ones die because the list gets longer every week. Yeah, that's right, Susan. We pray for them all.
can't play with our friends, can't visit our grandparents, can't see and touch our little grandparents. For everybody who cannot sleep. Constant worrying about symptoms, missing the people, worrying about everybody. The 20 won't have a graduation. Mm -hmm. Marianne Royal's four teenage grandkids can't hug them. You know, people out of work and out of money. Johnson misses her mom. Prayers for those who are incarcerated, those at news. Let's say that. Correctional centers in North Carolina. What if our kids are behind in school? Everybody in nursing homes or retirement communities stuck in tiny rooms. And now will you speak or type the names of those people on your hearts, living or dead, near or far? that this community might hold them in prayer and in love. For Marilyn Clayton, for London, Marie's mom. Lisa's dad. Daniela. Davin and Deborah. Nefer. May. Everybody at Cone. Antigua. Mom. Helen. Renee. Bonnie. Leanne. Dad. Joe Prater and family. Marty Bergman, everybody undocumented. Mariah, Ku, Charlie, Chad, and Quinn. Teresa Raxton, Wayne Warner, Jean Spangler, Marilyn, Mariella, Ralph, Phoenix, and Natasha, Marty, everyone in hospitals, Rose, Mom. Jack McManus and Colleen O'Neill. Connie and Dave. Rachel Hayes, 
Sherry Holiday Kwan. For all our visitors this morning. Everybody here, everybody not online. Marilyn, Fig, Latrice. Rose Dog, who's dying. Barbara Hands, 280 people at Noose Correctional who have COVID-19, 91 people at Butner who have it, the five people who have died there, and all their family and friends, all condemned to death. Kip, Pat, Charlie Burke, Linda Gretton's family, We send all of these prayers, spoken and silent, up to the love that holds us all. During these next few minutes of silence, you can focus on something you're grateful for or someone you are remembering, especially today, or just the pace of your own breath. So will you find a more comfortable place in your seat? And take a few easy breaths as we settle into our shared silence together. Amen. Friends, will you pray with me?
spirit of life, God of many names and no name, source of all. It is not our careful words that bring us close to you, closer to the meaning at the heart of all things, closer to the mystery and the love that holds us all. It is our cries in the longest nights. It is our shouts of joy in the mornings when finally they come. It is our gasping silence when we do not know what to say or do. It is in the smallest of good things offered to us in the pit of our sorrows. We know you in love, joy, life, peace, friendship, connection, romance, purpose, family. We know you also in the places where we ache for those things, in the places where we ache for those things to be made whole or made right. May all those who are alone know your good company. May all those who are afraid know comfort. May all those who despair know hope. May all those who are joyful feel that joy grow strong. We ask these things for ourselves, for those we love, and for those we do not love. Amen. Your reading this morning also comes to us from the poet Wendell Berry, from whom we heard last week. It says the peace of wild things. When despair for the world grows in me, and I wake in the night at the least sound in fear of what my life and my children's lives may be, I go and lie down where the wood drake rests in his beauty on the water, and the great heron feeds. I come into the peace of wild things who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still water and I feel above me the day blind stars waiting with their light. For a time, I rest in the grace of the world and am free. the peace of wild things. Earth Day is this week, though, of course, the natural world and its incredible splendor of meat and seed and metaphors for us are sources of wisdom in all seasons. And from that source I share with you, there is a kind of plant adaptation I've heard called the fire seed. Some coniferous plants, the ones who produce what we call pine cones, though they aren't all pines, go in places where forest and bushfires rage. And there's a rosin, a sap that covers all the places in the cone where the seeds are stored. In order to be released, in order for new life to be born, the rosin must be melted away by the heat of the fire. Now, I will never tell you that what you should learn from this is that what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And neither will the mental health professionals among us tell you that your suffering necessarily makes you stronger. 
I will never tell you that your grief and your heartbreak bring you closer to God or closer to the meaning of life or that you must walk through the valley of the shadow before you know the glory at the heart of it all. I will never tell you those things. In moments of crisis or great bewilderment, the platitudes circulate. And they used to be merely spoken or written on greeting cards or forwarded in chain emails, but now they're also all over social media, available always to us, shortcuts to getting over things which we cannot get over. And we can understand why, can't we? We are people in need of some comfort. We desperately want things to make sense. We want to some order, even if it's an order we don't understand. The world in which we live seems to either skip over suffering, three days off of work if you're lucky, and then back to normal, or else glorify it. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Everybody working without protective equipment is a hero instead of someone who's being asked to make unacceptable sacrifice. And our task is to do neither, to neither skip over or glorify the pain around us, to learn that the fires are a part of living. But so are the seeds and so is the rain. And so I wonder from all of you, what are the fires in your life right now? You can go from very close to you to what seems like very far away. What are the fires in your life right now? You can consider them silently in your home or you can type them in the chat. I'll go ahead and guess at some of them. We have wrote, yeah, congestive heart failure, serious illness, loss, grief, isolation, mental health struggles, job loss, no money, fear, anxiety, the pandemic, the economic downturn, those who place profits over people, around us. the heat of these fires. The rosin melts and the seeds are raised. Life comes, growth is possible. I was talking with Sue Beck and what one of what feels like hundreds of meetings and she said times of crisis are also times of creativity. We don't have to answer this question right now, she said, but this is a time for us to think creatively about what we want to be like when it's over. Sue was talking about the ministry of the church, but her instruction remains relevant to all of us about our own lives and our own homes and indeed the church and our city and our nation and our world. And so for you, 
And for this, we'll go very personal. Is there a seed? Is there something new and fragile discovered in these fires waiting to take root? Perhaps it feels so fresh and so new, like a very early pregnancy that you're afraid to even talk about it. You can think it to yourself, if that's the case. Or you can type it in the chat if you're ready. Is there a seed? Is there a fire seed? Yeah. There are seeds. family, growing things, mutual aid, kindness, learning more about what we need, the kinds of care that we need, that we can offer ourselves, that we can choose. For some of us, that the amount that we work is untenable and it's possible to do less. that it's possible to enjoy our living more now and each other's company. We did isolation and loneliness perhaps to teach us how much we love each other. And yet our isolation and our loneliness does powerfully that we love each other. Mm -hmm. Appreciating teachers more. That the truth of the forces that shape our lives is being revealed. Capitalism and systemic oppression. some clarifying what is actually essential. Yeah, those clarifying questions too. What actually do I want? There are seeds. 
Now, it is possible that you are not ready to think about the seeds. It is possible you are just still feeling in the fire. You can't even bear to think about seeds and the idea of seeds at this time makes you furious. And for you and for us all, I offer you the adaptation in certain Australian plants, the genus Banksia. There is the presence of a seed separator which prevents the seed from falling out when the fires melt the rosin. So the follicles in which the seeds are stored open after a fire. The seed release is delayed. Wikipedia tells us, as the cone dries, so after the fire burns the rosin, and then fades away as the cone dries, wetting by rain or humidity causes the cone scales to expand and reflex, promoting seed release. The effect of this adaptation is to ensure that seeds rele seed release occurs not in response to fire, but in response to the onset of the rains that follow. My friends, the rains are coming, but for most of us, they are not here yet. And so we name the fires and we try our hardest to withstand them, to help our communities withstand them. We mourn our losses. We rage at how much of the suffering around us was preventable. But we look for the seeds within us and in our communities. We know that they are there. Whether or not they are presently stirring, whether or not they are ready to release, and together we await the rains, and the rains will come. May it be so, and amen. Will you rise in body or in spirit for closing hymn number 396? I know this rose will open. We'll sing it twice. I know this rose will open. I know my fear will burn away. I know my soul will unfurl its wings. I know this rose will open. I know this rose will open. I know my fear will burn away. I know my soul will unfurl its wings. I know this rose will open. Will you join in our gallic extinction words? We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. One of the ways that we live out our mission to create loving community it's to contribute financially to the ministries of this congregation and to the good work of our community. If you'd like to make a contribution via PayPal to the operating budget of the church, you can do so at this link. This is the first link in the description. The Immigrant Solidarity Fund, run by our partners at Siembra NC, gets money in the hands of those who need it. 
Our undocumented neighbors will not qualify for the stimulus checks that many people are receiving and they are in need of extra support. So if you've got it, it's time to it. You can so at tiny.cc slash COVID relief. This is a fund that essentially operates like my discretionary fund. So our minister's discretionary fund um, is, uh, is a fund that people who in the community, in our congregation, um, who need some help write to me and I get them a check. Um, and so this is a fund that's operated similarly, but it's operated by people who are bilingual um, and who already have relationships extending into our undocumented Spanish speaking communities here in Guilford County and across the state. Um, so if you think that the minister's discretionary fund is a good project because it is a it's a way for people to get help without a ton of bureaucracy, um, then you might like this emergency cash assistance for our undocumented neighbors. And I encourage you and the Justice Action Team encourages you to make a contribution there. Our offering will now gratefully be received. From you I receive to you I give together we share and by this we live go in peace rejoicing and the power of love and connection we have kindled and found even here you can place your hands over your heart for our benediction hymn shalom Havarim. this is a hebrew song that means peace dear friends until we meet again Shalom Avarim, Shalom Avarim, Shalom, Shalom. Lahi triod, lahi triod, Shalom, Shalom. Shalom Avarim, Shalom Avarim, Shalom, Shalom. Lahi triod, lahi triod, Shalom. Shalom. You're invited to take a moment after our worship together is done to listen to this postlude in our description of this video. It's a song from the movie The Greatest Showman, but it's a rehearsal take, a seed. And we offer it to you here. So if you're a member of the congregation, which will include our folks who um, made it to our most recent pathway to membership class, even though you haven't signed the book, um, if you took that pathways class and pledged, uh, then we are, we are counting you as members of the congregation. Um, and we will formally recognize and celebrate your joining. But um, it was uh, uh, that the the timing of that class, I think, was such that uh, you are eligible to vote in the annual meeting. And we'll see you over there. Bye, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Visitors, we're happy to have you. And we'll see you back next Sunday. If you've been visiting regularly, um, get get in touch with me so I know to add you to our e-news uh, because you'll get more information about how to do them that way. Um, and you are free to subscribe from our e-news when this online worship pandemic stuff is over. But, um, but if you want to be informed about how to participate virtually in the life of the church and you've been appreciating to worship with us. I'd love to have you. So you can email me or you can see me uh, and I'll, I'll figure out how to get you on our list. Bye, everybody.